the traffic that's going to your website on Shopify today can be cannibalized by Amazon. That is a fact, yes. Based on your experience, how can a brand successfully translate success on Shopify to Amazon? And are there specific kinds of brands that you would not recommend selling on Amazon? The good news and the bad news about going from D to C to Amazon is that not every brand will succeed on both platforms. So that's the bad news. Not every single D to C product will work on Amazon. And even the experts can't force it to happen. The good news is, is that most brands will succeed on Amazon, but there are some conditions. You have to have, obviously, all the standard things like a high quality product. You got to outmarket your competition and all those normal things. But one of the most important things you have to do is understand the differences between D2C and Amazon. D2C website, you might get a 2% conversion rate. Amazon, it's like 10%. So what does that mean you should focus on? traffic. You need to spend a lot more time focusing on traffic generation on Amazon as a platform. So that means your PPC, your SEO, your CTR, pay-per-click advertising, search engine optimization, and click-through rate. And if you do those things, you're going to be more likely to be successful. There is a concern in the DTC community on launching on Amazon. Why even bother with Amazon to begin with? Should brands actually be worried about this? No. Out of the 100 people that are going to your website, 98 of them plus are bouncing today. And of those 98, at least 10 of those guys would have bought if they could find you on Amazon. And I buy everything on Amazon. I actually went through my own personal Amazon account over the last 10 years. And the amount of items I buy on Amazon, it was in the thousands. And there's just thousands and thousands of transactions that I've done on Amazon. Even if it was $10 cheaper on a website, I still bought it on Amazon. And it's not because I was my Amazon guy, because 10 years ago, I was nobody, right? And so Amazon has solved something that a lot of D2C brands still struggle with, and that is conversion rate. Since Amazon has solved for conversion, the traffic that's going to your website on Shopify today can be cannibalized by Amazon. That is a fact, yes. However, the net plus is significant. And typically what I'll see is 15% of the people that would have bought from you on Shopify will buy on Amazon. That's cannibalization by definition. However, the 10% of people who wouldn't have bought on your Shopify site will now buy on Amazon, basically 5Xing your conversion rate. And if we had a debate about what's easier to grow, traffic or conversion rates, I would handily defend that traffic is seven times easier to double specifically on Amazon than it is to double your conversion rate on Amazon. But the opposite is true from going from D to C to Amazon. It is a 5x conversion rate by just simply going over to Amazon. Therefore, it's net positive by a long shot when you're on Amazon and D2C. And since we've established not every brand will succeed on Amazon that is currently succeeding on D2C, you just simply need to test it. Worst case scenario, you could always shut down your Amazon account or pause it or have it higher priced on Amazon or give extra benefits on the website, but net positive in my mind. We decided to stop the automated pricing, but now we have the issue that we're constantly losing the buy box. I just want to know, in your opinion, what should we do moving forward? Because every time I see that we don't have that buy box, I want to die. There, there's no Amazon solution for your problem. This is a distribution question that Amazon does not care about. And so Norm is right. It's all about map pricing agreements and you have to police it yourself. Uh, so you can do transparency program. You could track your boxes. You could try and shut these guys down, you could file IP infringements, very much a whack a wolf situation. Better to just police the distribution prior to Amazon and, and enforce map harshly. So what are some strategies to build reviews fairly quickly so your listing gets more traction? I think reviews don't matter. Uh, and I'm going to be in the minority on this question. But as a case in point, I launched a mom box for Mother's Day with zero reviews. I did $144,000 in the first 30 days. I was ranked number one for the gift term, gifts for mom, two days before Mother's Day. And I only had one review by that point. So I, I think reviews are overblown. Uh, Amazon is hostile to review gen in 2024. You can't put anything related to reviews in your product inserts. You can't send an email asking for reviews. I think people should stop trying to generate reviews and start trying to generate sales. 
So instead of worrying about spending money generating reviews, lower your price, just get sales in the door when you first launch. I recommend 50% off when you launch your product. Every 50 units in sales you get, raise the price five to 10% until you get it up to that 100% parity. If you do that in a launch strategy, your honeymoon is gonna go very well. I'm curious to know your thoughts on AI in the Amazon space, specifically AI tools used for ads and dynamic pricing. So I am not a fan of AI. I think uh, I'm actually quite frankly tired of hearing about the latest and greatest AI hack that we hear at every single conference ever. So, but what I will say is this, is that the pilot or the human pilot will always beat the robot if they know how to pilot. And AI and, and, and when it comes to like PVC automation is really good at lowering costs, no question about it, but they're really bad at growing an account. They're really bad at trying to figure out a strategy. Um, so the one thing that I do use AI for is to take a list of keywords and chop it up into 100 character alt text to put into my A plus content. So one of the fastest ways to grow organic traffic on Amazon today is by putting copy in the A plus content that is crawlable outside of images because the AI is not quite smart enough to read the copy in the images today. That could change by next year. Rufus or whatever dog name they want to call AI next year could make it happen. But alt text, that's the code behind the images, is a great place to use AI. So what I would do is I'd take a tool like Helium 10 or Jungle Scout. i get my 50,000 uh, keyword export out of all the top 10 ASINs, run it through uh, a tool like Frankenstein, which takes out all of the duplicate words. And then I'm left with like, you know, 5,000 characters. Then I go to AI and I'll say, AI, chop this up into 30, 100 character um, alt text following the, the My Amazon Guy strategy. Um, and there's some rules behind that. And then I'll go copy and paste it in. And if you do some things like that, um, AI will save you some time, but it won't build a strategy if that makes sense.